folders to a brand new video and today's video if you can't already tell from the title is the hard steps for Shukikato's Gigantosaurus and um, probably the most complex origami model to be diagrammed to date and um, the longest near enough longest diagram as well quite a few hundred steps but anyway only the hard steps so make sure you are ready and let's jump straight into it. So, step number 58. Let me just put it over this side. I'll do it in the orientation of the book. So, step number 58 requires you. Now, another little thing is um, because I am not planning to finish this model, um, I am doing this solely to help my friend Ron who has made numerous attempts and has gotten stuck on a step further ahead which I'll get to eventually um, but he has been stuck for quite a while and I decided to refold this model help him get past the step and help him make uh, finish it um, so he can finally move on um, with other models so I decided to uh, film the hard steps as well as he mentioned to help other people so, because this isn't getting finished, I am going to make the creases through the parts where Shuke says do not make the creases. So, do not, for yourself, do not make the creases wherever Shuke says in the diagram, but I will, just to make, it, make the whole thing easier. So, step number 58, you will have something like this. I'll just show you from multiple angles before we actually jump into it. Now the goal for step 58 is we need to close sink. Probably, this is probably the first major complex sink that you will get in the diagram. So we need to close sink. We have two flaps here flap 1 and flap 2. We need to close sink both flaps one at a time through and then flip it over. So that is the manoeuvre. Now how we do it is, there's two ways. Oh there's an extra bit of paper. Oh an extra edge. So if you look at it like this, we have this edge and this edge. Now this part in the middle can either go to the left or go to the right. Um, it works either way. Uh, I can't remember which way it is but one of the ways you need to do an extra little step to correct it. So we're going to keep it to the left, open it up against a closed sink. So we want to then push it through and make the mount fold here. Basically parallel to this edge here. Close sink all this amount through. So maybe it's quite tricky to show just because of the size of the paper. Now I'm used to working with smaller sheets. So I'm just going to hold it like this. I'm holding it all together so it's a close sink and then if you can see the crease going round. Or it's probably easier to do it on the table and then start to push through the whole lot. Now it will look messy but don't worry. So again push through. And then push from the inside, make the mountain fold straight up. Now with the sinks for Shuki's models, it is easier to start it from one end, we'll just say the inside, and then finish it on the other side. Now 
Now, what we need to make sure is we need to make the mounting fold on the central part here. So just fold it over. Now when I'm doing this, uh, I'm doing it to show you as easy as possible. Uh, just make sure that you are doing it as accurate as you possibly can. Like that. And then fold it back up. So then you should have something like this. So we have done a close sink on this first flap and then fold everything down. Now it was that side where we put the extra flap, so it is the other side, so in order to fix it, fold it over, fold it down, fold it back. And there we go. We have successfully performed the first closed sink. And we'll just do the same on the other side. Okay, moving along to step number 95 and 96. So what we are required to do is basically pleat this section of paper. So looking at the diagram, uh, the mountain fold, we have to pleat symmetrically. Mountain fold, valley fold, mountain valley. So basically a pleat on both sides, but we do need to make an extra um, little crease here underneath. Even though the diagram says use existing creases, uh, we need to make an extra one, which is right here, this one here. But uh, that gets made as you do the step. It's not really one to pre-crease. So it may be a bit difficult to show just because of the size of the paper, I'm zoomed all the way out. Yep. So what we need to do is, now I've already performed the step, this is what I'm going to do for all the steps. Perform it, undo it, just to make it easier to show. So I'll basically show one side, and then I'll flip it over and do it on the other. So for making this the mountain fold, again follow the diagram. I'm just going to perform it. You need to use the diagram to know what creases to do. So essentially just doing that folding this over but on the other side as well so if I can somewhat do it like this and then as you do it I'm going to open up and push out this part like so. Now we're just going to bring these mountain folds, the long mountain folds, down and bring these parts down as well. So I want to flip over, do the right hand side first. So we're going to push it in. In order to do this, you will need to make this new crease, which I have already made. And then if you flip it over, it's already done. I'm going to try and show you from the inside what it looks like. Just need to push the excess paper 
all flat. Like that. That bit. It's hard to show big paper problems. So this middle layer, this one here, it goes straight down. There isn't excess paper for it to overlap one edge. It has to be symmetrical. Um, if the paper was overlapped, then it wouldn't be symmetrical. Therefore, you've done it wrong. So just make sure that when you've done this, push this paper as far as it goes inside to use up all the excess paper and then close like so. And that is step number 95 to 96. Now we are on step 157 through 164. Now what you should have, we're going to work on this little part. Um, we're going to turn it from this into this. Now I've already done it on this side to, I've done it, put it back together, done it, put it back together just to make sure I know exactly what to do and um, to make it as easy as possible to show. So we're going to turn it into this. So step 157 we need to unsync this part. Um, so first of all we have a few layers. We have layer number one which is on the top layer number two which leads to this little assortment of creases now I'll take my time showing this I just want to make sure that of course Ron who will be watching who is stuck at this part and um, I want to make sure that you have everything done correctly so just make sure we have like I'll say this part will fold down we tuck it under and you've got this edge here, this edge. Um, so now, first thing, um, to make this step a little bit easier, is we're going to do something similar to step 153, where we un untuck this layer of paper. Now the same thing happens when you start this unsync, uh, you do an unsync and untuck, just like this. So what we're going to do at, at, at the same time, so it all happens simultaneously, um, to make it easier we're going to do the untuck first, basically what we did here, inside. So we're going to open up, let me just zoom in, hopefully this is, that looks, a bit good. That looks a bit good, so open up layer number one, and then layer number two and then this edge here we're going to grab a hold of this and then pull towards us which will untuck the extra paper and then we're going to put it back together in this position and then do the, the unsync so layer number one layer number two I'm going to grab pennies here. I'm going to grab here and just pull forward. So this is what it looks like starting it. Let me get my phone. My phone's holding the, the book open so I can see the crease of uh, what I need to show, but flashlight. in focus but we're starting it off like this 
Right. That really helped. But anyway, we're going to keep pulling until we can't anymore. Yeah, it won't look extremely flat, but just pull the excess paper out like that. So basically we have pulled out two units worth of paper. Now it's not going to lie flat, so here's unit number one and unit number two. So we're number two end, we're going to push that paper back in because that is excess paper that we have pulled out. Now I'm going to do it and then show you. Like that. So I'm just going to take my time to show you from super close up if that helps. So we have just done the layer untuck as we did in step 153. Everything lines up when you recollapse it. So just like this, the, the section block. This is what we did in step 153. And then made of the exact same. So we're going to push that down again, make sure that we have underneath the valley fold here and then um, get the valley fold inside like that. So it will naturally come together. Once you put these creases in place it will collapse as normal. So again fold this edge back up and then fold over like that. So now if you open it back up, you have this. So again, layer number one, layer number two, we grabbed this part, pulled it towards us, which untucked that, ex that trapped layer. We pushed in the excess paper and then we folded it back over and then done that. So now, I'm going to lose it a wee bit. What we're going to do is pull out the layers out fully. Now before we go into the next step, we just want to make sure that we have these creases nicely firmly creased. And again, if you want to make it more accurate, fold that layer out of the way and then just crease like that and fold back up. So now we're going to do the unsync, so fold over two layers, grab it here and then just pull the paper. And as we do so we are going to make a mountain fold here all the way down and to the bottom. So pull from here as well, like that. And then from inside I'm going to push and make what was a valley fold now a mountain fold. Like so. that. Now I'm going to start to re-collapse it while putting in all the creases. Now just make sure that when you do this, you do it as neat as possible. And then fold it over. So I'm going to put it back in position and show you again. Where's my yellow tool? Yeah, it's there. So I'll show it from a bit further away now. So 
we're going to open up two layers, grab this part, and then pull. Then the mountain fold, also the same at the bottom as well, just grab and pull. And then as you can see, mountain fold, mountain fold, mountain fold. Penny wants back out. One second Penny, and then we are just going to collapse. And re-flatten. So you should have this. Now step 159. We are basically going to do all this simultaneously. Um, we need to do two open sinks at the top uh, and the bottom. One at the top, one at the bottom. So we'll basically just do the first uh, one at a time. So open up this layer. Basically open up both layers. In fact, we'll do the bottom one first, it's the easier one. So open this up. Now we need to open sync this part. We'll just open up the layer. Open sink this part. This bit's easy, but And just make sure that you get it nice and neat. So I can touch it up later, but over here we're just going to pull out this part of the paper and then just make the mountain fold, mountain, mountain, mountain. And then we're just going to like sink this part in. I'll show you in one second. So like that. I'm going to now make this the mountain fold. Fold it up. Make sure it's all lined up. And then curve it to just sort of make it flat and that is the bottom bit done I won't lie flat until we do the other part the top so like that now for the top the same maneuver but we're going to do another little unsync so looking at it from this position We're going to open up the flap number one and the same again, we're just going to pull this layer out. So out just enough so it's not stuck and then we're just going to open it up. And then the same again, we are just going to open sink the flap, mountain fold, mountain fold, mountain fold, mountain fold and then just sink this part in.
Right, I'll fix that part up off camera, but keep continuing this. So if you meet it like this. And then just bring the edges together. Now the way of the way that the paper is, it will naturally want to form. So I'll just press these parts down. Fold down two layers. normal, fold up and then fold down and when you get here don't firmly press it, make sure to check all the little bits in between that is all lying nice and neatly and when you're happy with it firmly press it to hold the creases in place. So that is steps, step number, steps number um, 157 to 164 and the little extra one is fold this part behind this one here like that so Ron hopefully you managed to do this I will put it back together I'll take pictures of the process and send you them as well And yep, that is it. On to the next step. Steps number 167 to 173. Now, what we need to do next is we're going to basically perform two sinks. One is an unsink, one is essentially a closed sink, which um, Shuke doesn't mention. Um, that's the second one. So basically, two somewhat complex-ish sinks, we're coming up to the hardest sink that Shuke says there is for this model. So now what we're going to do is we are going to unsink this far pocket. So if you open these layers up, that's this layer right here. Now again I've already performed it, I've undone it to um, know how to do it and such to uh, basically make it easier. But you flip it over the far pocket is this one here. So we're going to be working on this and this layer, this edge, this pocket. Um, so make sure to look at the diagram to um, make it easier to observe and see what to do. But anyway, we're going to work on this one here. We basically need to sync this up and then back down, which creates a pocket for this big part to come round. So we're going to turn it back over. And we'll start off at the right side, it is easier. So with, basically that's going to be a closed sink. Well not open near enough, like you can do it closed, but, so I'm holding this point on that flap with my middle finger. I'm opening up the layers and if we zoom in, let me get my handy flashlight on my phone. Yeah, so it doesn't really work. I'll get a better torch for the next one. But we're going to be pushing just up on this point where this mountain fold ends, the bottom of that mountain fold, we're just going to push up. So it doesn't matter if you do it to the left or to the right, so we're just going to push it all the way up. Like that. We're just going to make this mountain fold. So 
pencil like that. And then we're just going to incorporate this valley fold here and this mountain fold here in order to get the right hand side flat. So we put this back together. We'll need to fold it like that. So like that. Now it won't fully lie flat until we do this side. Now for this side, we are going to push up and essentially the creases that we make are from this point to here. So it's a one by three crease, so one unit, two unit, three units, and then up one. One by three, a one by two, and then a one by two. So what's going to happen is we're going to have the valley fold, valley fold and then from this point here is the new crease which is a valley fold and then the other two are mountain folds. These do get made naturally as you make this crease, uh, this fold and then the continuation of this valley fold forms it. So I'm pushing this up to make use of this valley fold to flatten it and then this down like that. I'm going to just double check this side. Make sure it's nice and flat, which it is. So let me show you this side first. You have this. Now it doesn't matter if it goes under that bit or over, but keep it over anyway. D depending on how you collapsed, under or over, you can easily swap it at this point. So that's that part. And then the cool part looks like that. Hopefully we manage to get this now next what we are going to do is fold down this flap so I'll open it up we're just going to fold this part down as natural as it does and then down like that. And then we collapse it. So we have just flipped the orientation of this crease here because it was like that when it was collapsed but now we are just flipping it over. So we collapse it and then fold it down like that. Now next is the sort of closed sink. So essentially what we need to do, what the diagram says is this big flap here, this one here, it's the same on both sides, has to be sunk in and then brought against the inside. So how we do this is perform two closed sinks. So if 
you open it up, this is the gap where the flap will come through. So I'm just going to start off by holding my finger underneath and my thumb just holding it together. And we're just going to push down on this corner right here. Near enough, all the way down. Like that. So that's as much as I'm going to do on this side. Because I want to keep it even. So I'm going to zoom back out and then do the same on this side. So again, open up the inside pocket. Hold the layers together and then just push. So it's easier. Like that. So now that we have done this, we're just going to go to the inside and then form the creases on this part. It will be easier to remake them on this side. Like that. But you don't even need to do a close sync on that way, you can just do something like that. And then we have got this. So let's push this part back through. I think I went too quick to show up. Because it looks like when you do, when you uh, start it, the right hand side oh, um, it has two units worth so there's, a, there's enough space to, for it to go nice and flat but here we have this extra pocket this extra point which doesn't give us the length we need so we need to push this inside which after doing so makes it flat uh, makes it lie completely flat and then we can fold it down. But again, don't press it fully, flip it back over. Pull over this flap just to get it near. Make the mountain fold. Make sure you've got all of the Creases used correctly, and there we go. Fold this part back up, and that is steps steps number one seven five through one seven nine. So step one seven five um, is simply make a crease lining up with the edge. So just fold and unfold. Um, you can of course take your time doing that. Make sure it's lined up nice and neatly. But these steps are simply shrinking the tail and sinking the excess paper um, within. So once you do that, we are going to open up the model and then make a valley fold. Basically the whole tail is going to swing round um, off this crease here. So it's not going to lie flat as the diagram states. Now if we turn the model somewhat like this, so the next step that we need to do is essentially sink 
this section of paper. So to make it clearer, let me zoom in before I show you. We have the crease here that we made um, and pre-creasing and then we have essentially three layers. We have layer number one, number two, number three. We are only going to be focusing on number three. So the way to sync this is, as the diagram shows, we need to flip the tail like so. And then we are going to open up the model and make this a mountain fold. So we're doing an open sync on the middle to close sinks on the sides. So we're going to open up. I'm just going to push from here up. So I'm going to hold from here and then just push up from the inside like that. And now because it's a closed sink, we need to keep this, if I fold this part up, let me just zoom in before I show you. So it's essentially like this to begin with, so we need to fold down the sets number one and two that we're not going to use. And set number three, because it's a closed sink, we need to keep this edge uh, together. If you, op if you sink it like that, it will be an open sink, which it shouldn't be. Like that, sorry. So we need to keep this edge towards it. So let me zoom back out, like why, like that. So again, I'm just going to push from this part up and this corner out. Now, while keeping this part together, I'm just going to push in all the way. And then the inside. Just so I can effectively use this crease neatly. Like that. Now we're just going to do the same on this side. So turn it around. Push up. And then keep the set number three together. So I'll keep it lined up like that. And then just push in on the top. And then meet in the middle with that ballot fold, like so. Now we are going to make a mountain fold here and here. Now it may take a little couple of minutes to get things nice and neat. So this is where we then uh, bring the tail back round to fully incorporate the crease. So push in the middle. And then swing it around. So if we look from this side, just to neaten it up, just like that. I'm just making sure everything looks nice and neat and how it should be. I want to make sure everything, all the creases that we took our time making during pre-crease are getting used correctly. So we can then bring this back round.
now just bring the tail down because we need to just flatten the inside so if we open up this part just open up basically make that valley fold and we want to see it nice and neat like here so just make sure we have have a look at that so this mountain fold that we made for the sink is lining up with that edge and the other crease and it's the same on the other side now we zoom back out and we are going to fold down this edge and that will lie flat. And the same on this side. And then we're going to close it over. So we have this. Now open it back up. And then we're just going to make a valley fold on the crease that we made in step 175 with the tail back up. And again, make sure you're using the full crease. Take your time once you do this step just to adjust everything. Make sure you're using it as best as possible because you want to get the best result. No mesh folding here. Mush is bad. And then when you've got it all nice and neat, fold it back down. And that is steps 175 to 179. And then this is step 180. Steps 202 to 205. Now these are probably quite difficult steps, um, took me a few goes just there to figure out fully what I have to do and um, I do remember these being quite brutal when I first um, done these steps and my actual fold but a few little things that we can do first to make this easier and um, this first one is optional and um, we're going to be working on this side and this leg gets in the way so um, for the sake of this fold, again, I'm not going to finish it, so I don't care what creases it makes. So I'm just going to fold it up um, and then just peg it. As you can see, I'm not using paper between the pegs like that. So it holds the leg out of the way. You can, of course, um, hold it up with your hand, whatever is easiest. Um, number two is we can. So at step number 202, we are left with this. Well, uh, 201, sorry, we're left with this. So it's not actually folded over. So we can actually do, go ahead and do that. Flatten the edge. It's left like this and it's just simply folding up. And then the other one is where, once you do that, where these creases meet, this is the crease that you make anyway. You just go ahead and make that. So that's two things that we've done. Three things that, uh, the first one is optional, but these two you can do. But in the meantime, I will show the step. I would recommend watch this step first before attempting it. So watch the whole part that I show and do, so you get a rough idea of what to do and of course make sure to uh, stay in line with the diagram it is quite tricky and also another little trick is let me just quickly show you and um, these diagrams uh, you have to repeat on other sides and they're only suited to for instance the left direction if you flip it over it would be going to the right and then the diagrams won't work for this side 
So it's, you'd have to try and memorise it all and do it perfectly. So a lot of trickers. If I go on my pictures, and um, here I've just taken a picture of step one nine four. This is going towards uh, the right, the left. So a little trick a viewer told me uh, a while ago was if I uh, flip the image on your phone. So I'm gonna click on here. I'm just gonna click edit. Click the pan crop and then just flip it and then click done. Now the image is back to front which will suit the opposite direction that the diagrams aren't meant are are not meant to be followed in that direction. If that makes sense and anyway, it is a big game changer. Um, you can take a picture of the full screen and flip the, the all the steps to make it easier for when you need to repeat 30 steps on the other side. So that works extremely well. Now, what we're going to do is, once you've done these two bits, you need to fan out the pleats. Now what we're going to do is fan out the pleats. So basically, we have these here. You're just going to pull one up until it's near enough 90 degrees from here and here so like that and then the tricky part is first of all like this to make it easier to show yep so move my hand a little too so you need to make a crease again I've already made this done it in advance to make it easier to show and collapse so we do have, um, yeah, so once you've done the full pleats like that, make sure that um, this edge ends up here. You've not done it like that, which is wrong. So make sure you've got all the paper fanned out. Okay, so what we're going to do is, we're going to count down from here and go one, two, three, and four. And then go up one, I'll back the zoom right in. Like that, so one, two, three, and four, and then up to the top. Just this flap here, we're not going to go any further. So, where this edge of the paper finishes, we're going to call that point A. And we're going to go back down and then go one, two, three, four, right here. This is point B. So, point A and point B, we're going to make a crease, a straight crease. Um, between those two, so you pull it out, like that, to make the crease easier, what I did was just essentially undo these pleats until I can get the paper nice and flat, like that. And then make it as as, uh, as straight as possible, I meant to say, not flat, as straight as possible. So once you've made that, um, so by doing so, we're going to pull out some excess paper here. And make, again it's quite tricky to actually make a crease. And here, we're supposed to make the mountain fold and valley fold because the way the paper pulls out. It causes excess paper, so it won't lie flat, essentially. So once you get to near enough this position, we're just going to push down on here. Like that. So that this is where we're making this crease, and this one comes in handy, because you need to do this, you need to form these two right now, when it's fully, fully in a 3D position. So like that, and then we're going to reform the top half, so it's simply reform the creases, and then we're just going to again reform it with the new creases. Now these uh, basically are the continuation of this mountain fold will go through this crease, um, this flap, this layer, 
Uh, we'll go through the intersection. So where this crease meets this crease, it should go through there. And then where crease uh, this one ends, it should go through, it should meet at the point. And it's the same with the rest of them, so it should end, the valley fold should end here. And then the mountain fold, and then the valley fold. So just take your time trying to make sure you have everything lined up. Um, it is quite tricky. And then when you've done that, we're just going to reform the crease like that. After then fill this one back up to get closer. And then fold over like that. And then there will probably be, yeah, the excess paper here. We just fold this down and behind this flap. Like that. And this should all align up. Like this edge here should line up with here. And you should have this. So it is a somewhat tricky, like, let me see if I did it even. Yeah, no, I never. So the diagram says they obviously make the mountain fold valley fold, but it's done it to some extent, but maybe not much. But that's basically the idea of it. Yeah, so hopefully you managed to get this. That is quite a tricky step to do. And it's just a matter of lining up these new creases with the intersections of the other creases. And if you do that, they are correct. So that is steps 202 to 205. Step 233. Now, this step is probably deemed the most difficult. Somewhat close sync in the book it is uh, Shuki says this is very difficult to do. So I'm gonna show you what to do. Now step 233 uh, you should have this these layer of assortment show you from all angles is to make sure you have this because if you don't then it won't work and you've done something wrong and you need to backtrack so just make sure you have this Okay, now the goal is we need to close sync this flap, so two units worth, one and two, this section underneath this section. So we need to put it inside this layer. So how do we do this? First of all, we're going to start off by making this crease right here, a mountain fold, and then we're going to put in the right hand side, this seems to be somewhat the easiest, and then the left hand side, so we'll make this the mountain fold first. How do we do that easily? We just grab this crease right here, this one right here. So 
So this one right here, I'll go extra slow on this step just to make sure it's, um, it's I'm sure as clear as possible. So I'm going to grab this and then pull it up to make a mountain fold on this. So somewhat like this. And then this creates a nice little pocket for us where I'm going to hold it like this. Now, what we're going to do is, as you see, we have this diagonal here. Oh, a bit more just to show you. Oh, wait. There we go. So we have this crease right here. And then, of course, uh, underneath as well. So we want to push in this paper, make this edge a valley fold and then valley fold on here and then the same underneath right somewhat um, if, if it makes it easier this step I would suggest adding like pegs here and there um, because you for this part we, we may need to open up the paper it depends how cleanly you get it but we may need to open up the paper for this part um, to make it neat um, and just in case you open up the paper too much and things become too undone it could be too difficult to put back together so even just put some pegs here 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 peg it here and then when you come to open it if these are restricting it you can take one off but yeah so we're going to work on the right hand side first and we just grab our newly made mountain fold grab here and we're just going to pull it and then push in and then just form it like so yeah so we have this now I won't lie fully flat near enough does I just do that which this is correct uh, but I'm not going to uh, force anything squash anything just yet I'll do that last minute so I'm just going to re-pull out the crease like this so this part was just sunken in ever so slightly so I just wanted to pull it back up just to make sure it's being used again correctly and then we have this so as you can see the mountain fold is lining up and this will get tucked back underneath. Okay, so that is side one done. If you have that, brilliant. Let's go on to the somewhat trickier side. So we need to, the same again, continue the mountain fold and then push in this excess paper, two units worth in, and it will all naturally lie flat. So there is no real easy way um, to do this. Just try and make as much of the mountain fold as possible. Somewhat like this. And then start pushing in more. Like that. And if you've done sinks like this before I think you get the idea of it we just really need to invert this point straight up so it ends up being like here and a wall of naturally life flat we are using creases we've already got but then just push it in as much as possible Yeah, don't worry too much if it doesn't lie flat here, I'll show you a little trick on what to do next. 
So I should have this. Now we near enough have all the mountain fold made on the outside. Just this little part here. Um, so if you have something like this here or here, um, it's best to try and open up the model. You're going to be going under yeah, it's really hard to explain. No, not hard to explain, hard to show. So we're going to be going under this flap here. Inside this one. So see where you have this. We're going to be going underneath it. Now this is where I said like peg parts. Because we all need to sort of open it up. To make this part easy. Easier. Now I'll try to see how am I going to... Try and use this first. Right, so I'll just try and rock it. Right, there we go. So I'm very happy with that. Now, if you've done that, just make sure to uh, reform the creases around it. Now it's working, it's lying flat, but I can feel a slight bump, which means you can, you can probably see the from where the light's hitting. When the paper sort of ends crumpled here, it should go straight across and lie completely flat. So what we're going to do is now open it up. I need to out. And yes. So we have this, um, you're going to basically grab this part, you're going to grab this part, we're going to go inside here, so basically I'm going to hold here, hold here, hold up, and then, let me just get my phone light, oh, I've got the big another torch to make it easier to show. So man sort of focuses on it and not the not the phone. Right, <laughs> it's focusing on the phone. Anyway, I'm gonna open this up. Yeah, that's better. Right there, right there. That's the culprit. And so I'm gonna hold here, I'm gonna hold here and just pull. has been pulled through successfully and the paper isn't being it's not being crumpled so we can close it back over reform this mountain fold it's like come on done Same again, I'm just going to but no, that's fine. So now if we look from the same angle, we don't have that shadow. The paper has been separated nice and smoothly and evenly. So the, the, the left hand side is done. And the right hand side we make that crease and then Just close like that, and then of course just uh, just make sure that you have all these layers nice and neat. 
And once you have done that, you have successfully completed one of the hardest sinks in the diagram and we are ready to move on. Steps number 238 to 244. Now, this is a somewhat difficult step. It is actually quite difficult. Um, probably the, the most difficult I have found at the moment for this model. Um, I wasn't looking forward to doing it when I, of course, planning this video. But, you should have this. Now, the idea is we just need to sink all of this paper essentially up. Um, so a few things to note beforehand, before we make it. Um, what I got to work for me was just by making valley folds here, extra valley folds uh, on both sides. So just fold the layer up and then obviously vice versa. Um, so four there. And then if you open it up, make a mountain, a valley fold here and a mountain fold there. These creases will help put somewhat life flat after we do the initial start. So this is the plate. You just open it up and then the valley fold there. Now to start off, we are just going to hold here. And then pull all these layers out. It isn't really going to lie flat, even after we collapse it. Shuki says it lies mostly flat. Until we have this. And then we're just going to box pleat the first crease in. And then it goes all the way down. And if you lift up this little spot, there is a mountain fold here. So we just collapse like that. This is the easiest part of the step. And then we'll open up the next part. Like that. So that is the first main bit. Now um, sinking this part inside is somewhat tricky, but there is an easier way to do it. Essentially, you need to fold, push the paper up, so make this a valley fold and sink it inside this pocket. So, an easier way to do it is if we make the second crease up mountain fold, this one here, and then we're just going to open up this part and push in and then of course the other end of it just make it the exact same you may need to open up the inside to try and get it as neat as you can so like that When I fold it over like this, I can feel that it's lying flat, but if I feel any bits uh, or bumps, um, then I know it's something wrong and I can open it up and fix it. So we're going to do that, and then if we come back over here, we're going to open up the pleat. And then this top crease, so this one underneath, essentially the same one, they all lie on top of each other as a mountain fold and we're just going to push it up to here now I'm pretty sure this is not the super correct way to do it but it works for me and um, I, I get it to exactly how it should be um, and to lie flat Near enough. Like that. And then, yeah, we're going to sink this part. So I'm going to open up 
this pocket into the inside here and then just push this part all the way in. So it's essentially a closed sink near enough. This is where I think it's this part that I won't lie flat, the rest does, but essentially this part won't. Now, where we made that valley fold, when we opened the pleat, we can start to collapse it by folding up like this. And then we're just going to push in these creases. So, oh yeah, and then make a valley fold here and then one here. So, we're pushing it down to try and control all that excess paper that is moving about. And then we'll bring them together. I'm hoping yours is neater than mine because this side wasn't. This is it. This side was the side I was planning. I figured out the other side is somewhat neater. So just make sure we have this full valley fold incorporated. It may take a little couple minutes after you do this to get things lined up. and to make it neater. So somewhat like that. So hopefully you manage to get this. That is quite a tricky step. And the diagram explains it really well but even myself couldn't fully understand um, exactly what I was trying to tell me to do, but this works. The other side is the exact same. So let me show you this from angles. Okay, and of course, when you do this, make sure to just um, touch up everything, use all the creases to make sure they are nice, nice and perfect. But yeah, this is a really tricky step to get right. Step number... 279 to 284. And we're going to be working on the teeth. So making the first tooth. So let's zoom in. We don't need to have the camera up this high anymore. Everything is a lot smaller. So what we're going to do is, let me just go from like this, this position. So we're going to have these layers. So we're going to lift up one, two, and three. We don't need to focus on these ones. It's the ones underneath that we need to work on. So we have all these zigzag layers that we made from the open sinks. I'm doing that big section of paper to bring it all combined into one. Now, to do the teeth, what we're going to do is we're going to lift all of them up and work on there. We're going to work on this one here. So, how do we turn this? Point right here is a tooth, so we have one, two, three, four, five. We have five on each side, uh, five on the bottom, so 20 in total. But how do we turn this into a tooth? So, what we do is now, if you've made crease patterns uh, from Kota Ima, um, he has done similar, similar things like this on how he creates spikes. So, we are essentially making a spike and then turning it into a tooth. What we do is we have trapped paper within here that we need to pull out and release so how we do that is we just grab here and then pull 
and you're thinking, oh no, it's going to get really weird, just perfectly fine. Like that. So until you pull out all the trap paper, it will look like a mess. But just perfectly fine. We're going to re-sort it back into place just by making reforming the mountain folds on the other side, just these creases here, how these ones are set. And then having them meet in the middle, like that. And now we're going to reform the valley folds, just like these ones here. In between all these ones we're going to reform this and push it in. Now this excess paper can uh, go to the top or the bottom and make it go to the top. So as you see this part is up at the top, if I flip it around and push it down then it will go to the bottom. So make sure it's at the top. So I can go either way, this is how spike formation works on a lot of crease patterns. And then fully collapse it. So before you fully collapse it, again, always make sure that you are using the crease exactly. You're not making any extra creases. Open the paper up and make sure you're using the actual valley fold that you should be, and you should be using it all. Like that. So again, make sure it's neater than mine. So now what we're going to do is, we're just going to fold, we're going to pull over this excess bit of paper, over to the left, like that, and then flatten it. Again make sure we are using everything correctly, like that. Now fold it over and make sure that it, um, it lines up with all the other layers. If I hold it like this, it's not sticking out too much, it's not pushed to, uh, too much in. Just make sure it's nice and evenly lined up. And if it is, you're using all the creases correctly. So what we're going to do now is, we are going to fold over, so turn them in as much as possible. So I'm essentially going to make a valley fold right here. So we're going to take this edge, fold it over and make a valley fold right there and a little squash fold in here. But don't worry, this squash fold doesn't have to be neat, it's never going to get seen in the model when you form the teeth. You'll glue all these layers and it will never get seen, it will never see the daylight again. So it's a parallel valley fold, the same angle as this edge. Now when you know how to do this, um, you can not make it parallel, you can make it angled, Just you can pull it out more. Doing this just makes uh, pulls out extra paper to form the tooth, uh, extra length so it can be seen. So I'll do it first and then I'll show you close up. So it does help to have a pair of tweezers, anything that you can use to get a grip of it. And then it's what essentially is something like this and then I'm just going to flatten out the top. I'm not even worried if it's going to work neat or not. So I'm just going to press it. Like that. And then doing so forms a little spike, which is a tooth. So that's what we have. And then once we do that, we're just going to fold 
the paper in half, just grab it here and then tuck half the paper over. Now again it can be half, it can be more, it can be less. This is personal touch on how much you want to thin out the tooth, even like that. Again this will, you can adjust this when you actually shape the model. So there we go. We've just folded the extra paper in half. Now that is steps 279 to 284. You just repeat the rest on the other four here and then on this side. And that was the last hard step I'm going to show. Um, so basically where I've stopped is step 360. The, shape, uh, the steps before and after this are entirely shaping and getting the posture everything correct and all the initial details but yeah that is it everyone I hope this hard step video helped you I never showed all of them simply because it's good to understand how to do it yourself how to figure it out and um, it's the process of learning rather than me showing you how to do every single part um, of, the, of, the, of the steps and make it too easy for you I want you to struggle I want you to learn how to do it on your own but hopefully I gave you a head start and hopefully if you clicked on this video and you stumbled um, you're slick on a step that I recorded hopefully you managed to get past it and so yeah that is it everyone um, good luck on finishing your model and make sure to show me if you finish it yeah that is it